Who was the greatest failure in the Bible? You might just be surprised as to what some people have said about this question. Who's the biggest failure in the Bible? Specifically, we'll look at what Kenneth Copeland has said. Not only is his eyes creepy, but so is his doctrine. No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities. Let's put on our thinking caps and examine according to scripture. Cue my theme music. All things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallowed be, cause this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub, and today we're gonna talk about who Kenneth Copeland believes is the biggest failure in the Bible. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is this, how is this even controversial? Like, what would someone say that would make you do a video? Well, hold your horses, we'll get there in a second. But you may answer the question to, who is the biggest failure in the Bible? Some people may say Adam. Some people may say David, Solomon, right? There are answers we could explore Right. Just showing the human history of sinners. But let's hear what Kenneth Copeland has to say. Who is the big, who's the biggest failure in the Bible? God is. What you said? The answer he gave is what everyone in the audience should have done just right before they left. Never to return to a Kenneth Copeland sermon ever again. But sadly, I'm sure many people who were there still listen to him and view him as a great man of God. What a terrible answer he gave. What an unbiblical answer he gave. But you may be thinking to yourself, Kate up, that was only one time, right? Surely he never said it again in any other context, right? You know, everybody asks you, say, who's the biggest failure? They say, Judas. Somebody else will say, no, I believe it's Adam. Well, how about the devil? He's the most consistent failure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's not the biggest in terms of material failure and so forth. The biggest one in the whole Bible is God. Mm. Oh, what, what, what? Don't you turn that set off. <laughs> you listen to it. You, I told you now, you sit still a minute. You know me well enough. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell something I can't prove in the Bible. He lost his top-ranking, most anointed angel, the first man he ever created, first woman he ever created, the whole earth and all the fullness therein, a third of the angels at least. That's a big loss, man. I mean, you figure all that, that's a lot of real estate, brother, gone down the drain. Now. The reason you don't think of God as a failure is he never said he's a failure. <laughs> and you're not a failure till you say you're one. Boy, if you don't get- Are you serious right now, bro? So many stupidities, even in that short clip, where do we begin? How about we start at the beginning with even the framing of the question. But he's not the biggest in terms of material failure and so forth. Beast in the whole Bible is God. But notice how he framed the question in terms of material failure, as if you judge the success of a person based on the material possessions, right? This is definitely rooted in his word of faith theology. But notice what he ended with, right? God is the biggest failure in that terms. Well, my Bible tells me, Isaiah 46, 10, that he declares the end from the beginning and from ancient time things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish my purpose. What God says, he accomplishes. So Kenneth Copeland, how could God be the biggest failure? How? He lost his top ranking, most anointed angel, the first man he ever created, first woman he ever created, the whole earth and all the fullness therein, a third of the angels at least. So he goes on to say that God lost, right? God lost Adam, 
Eve, third of the angels. Really weird, strange phrasing where I would say God did not lose them. They were judged for their sin. And as we've already established, God's purposes were still not thwarted. Job 42, 2 tells us that, that no purpose of God's can be thwarted. This was all in his plan. Goodness gracious, that's good. <laughs> yes. And if you actually listen closely, Kenneth Copeland reveals his true motivation behind this statement. And of course, like all word of faith heretics, it's rooted in the money. That's a big loss, man. I mean, you figure all that, that's a lot of real estate, brother. Gone down the drain. This even reveals how dumb his clip was about how God lost all this in the beginning, right? The scripture tells us that it is all his. As he created, he still has sovereignty and control. The psalmist tells us that he owns the cattle on a thousand hill. Everything that moves is still God's. So what is Kenneth Copeland talking about here? I can't even tell you that, like, you know, like, if I, I don't know, like, never know, you know, like. But let's finish up on the last statement he said, and we'll talk about it. Now, the reason you don't think of God as a failure is he ain't never said he's a failure. <laughs> and you're not a failure till you say you're one. So let me get this straight. God, even though... Kenneth Copeland said he is a failure, isn't really a failure because he didn't admit he's a failure. So therefore, he's not really a failure. I'm, c c I'm confused. I'm confused right now, G. Yeah, it sounded that dumb to me. I was just making sure. So let's end it with St. Westbrook. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you. For watching another episode of all things theology if you enjoyed what you heard today go on and give me a like subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell i promise to give you weekly lives videos interactions exposing false teachers sharing with you the viewer my theological beliefs things about the culture and the bible so if you're here for that come on and join us also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Yeah.